but some of you are brand new to us. And I am uh, Joel Kaplan. I'm the Associate Dean for uh, our Professional Graduate Programs, uh, which means I'm in charge of all of the residential um, programs, including um, television, radio, and film, broadcast and digital journalism, magazine, newspaper, and digital journalism. Those three primarily are now the feeder into the sports communication track. And with me today is Martha Coria, who's the Assistant Director of uh, uh, Professional Graduate Programs Office. <laughs> we change the name, so I get a little confused sometimes because I'm old and doesn't sink in. Um, and so she's here also in case you have any specific questions about admissions or process or all that. But our, our star, our guest of honor is <laughs> Professor Olivia Stomsky, who is this year four or five? This is four. Year four at the Newhouse School, although yeah. knows the Newhouse School backwards and forwards because she was an uh, undergraduate here and then went up. And, and if you see great production on Fox Sports or on ESPN, odds are she's the executive producer behind all that. And she still does it on weekends. Luckily, she's been able to get some sleep this year because she hasn't had to do it as much. But in previous years, she would be dragging around this time of the semester. But so Olivia, Professor Stomsky has, runs our sports program. She does an incredible job. And she's kind of here just to talk to you about how it works at the graduate level and to answer all your questions. And Martha and I are just going to kind of sit around and watch her, but we'll be available to maybe answer questions that she might not know the answers to. Although, honestly, she knows the answers to just about everything. So, Professor Stavsky, the floor is yours. Thank you. If I didn't know the answer, I would just make it up. Okay. Um, and, and hope that I was right. So I see a lot of familiar faces that I'm really excited to see. Some of you I feel like I haven't seen in a while. Maggie, I see you. I'm excited to see you. Welcome back. And Alice, of course, um, I see Ian. I don't see Perry, but I see that she's here. Um, and and I, I recognize a lot of your names. So thank you guys so much for being here. Some of you actually, I'm gonna repeat some info because um, there's Perry, I see you. Um, some of you might know some of this information just from taking my classes or you know having conversations with me but just in case i'm going to go over quite a bit of stuff tonight to give you guys a good idea of what the sports media and communication track looks like for the grad program so to start off i'm going to share my screen with you here um and i want to make sure that if you have any questions please don't hesitate to um ask or, or stop me along the way so i'm going to make sure i can see as many of you as possible so in order to understand the sports media and communication track, you have to understand the sports media center first. So the sports media center really oversees the sports media and communication track. And the sports media center is really dedicated to connecting faculty staff with students and fostering the sports media and communication um, track within our grad program at Newhouse. So, we really started there and from there creating that new the sports media and communication track for our grad program and then we also host several events um, we sent out emails regarding scholarships internships connecting um, our students with alums um, but how that really started was a few years before i got there it's changed a bit since i've got there um, I always like to tell my students, you should know a little bit about me so you can decide if you want to keep listening or if you want to just tune me out. I could be some crazy lady off the street. Who knows? Dean Kaplan could definitely have just like picked me up and been like, hey, you want to come to read these slides for us? So let me give you a little information about me. I did my undergrad at Newhouse. Um, I grew up with a single dad and I'm from San Diego, California. So um, anyone from California or warm states, okay. If you decide when you decide to come here, you and I will talk. I'll give you some pointers to keep warm. It's not that bad. It's a lot of fun. We could we we all survive, and then it's really what bonds us. But I had never even seen snow, like never ever. And of course, the first time I had seen snow um, as a freshman, I thought I was like a Disney princess. I came out of class and I was like, it's glorious. And then I realized it doesn't just go away or float in the air, that it like gets in your shoes and like sticks around for a while. Um, but it is what bonds us as Newhouse grads, as Syracuse grads. So it just makes you stronger. 
Um, I knew that I wanted to get into sports broadcasting from a very young age. I um, grew up with, as I said, a single dad. He loved sports. I loved watching sports with him. I could see that with all of the stresses of being a single parent, um, just kind of went away in front of a Lakers game. And I thought, this is what I want to bring to people. I also had a, a really wonderful opportunity at a young age to make, meet a woman named Leah Wilcox, who is now the vice president of the NBA. And I was at seven or eight years old. And when she told me that she worked for the NBA, my mind was blown. And I remember asking her, wait, girls can be in the NBA. And she said, well, actually we, I boss, I boss them around. And I said, I want your job, whatever it is, that's got me written all over it. Um, so she told me it was a sports producer. I had no idea what it was, but from seven years of age on, I knew I was going to be a sports producer. Um, so when it's time to go to college, I luckily had played um, at camps for um, Magic Johnson's basketball camps growing up. We would save our money all year so that I could um, go to this week-long camp, and I'd gotten to know him from a young age. So my dad called his office and said, um, you know, Liv wants to know where she should apply for colleges. We don't have a lot of money to, you know, apply to a lot of colleges. She wants to be a sports producer. He called back and said he had called Bob Costas, and Bob said I had to go to Syracuse. Um, so that was it. That was going to be where I needed to go. I had a backup plan. My backup plan was um, Stanford and I would be pre-med. I got into Stanford first with my fingers crossed that Syracuse would say yes. Um, and finally they did. And I was like, oh, well, Stanford, here I come, SU. So um, it was by far the best decision I had ever made. Um, Newhouse really taught me how to succeed in this career. It taught me how to be tough, how to take criticism, how to compete, how to research, um, all of those skills I learned in the four years from the professors at Newhouse. Good news is a lot of those professors are still there teaching those wonderful things that helped me win six Emmys and have this incredible career that I've had. So um, it just was really the beginning for me. So I started interning at Fox Sports uh, while I was in college. Every winter break, spring break, summer, it got to a point where they're like, are we don't, you don't need to keep coming back every day. Um, I just loved it so much that by the time I was a senior in college, they realized, well, I guess we're going to have to start paying you now, which luckily they did. I started my career there at Fox Sports and was there just under 10 years. It was a wonderful place to work and really built my community um, within the industry. There I produced studio shows, uh, live games. Um, I did a lot of feature producing there. I worked with promos and marketing um, and teases. From there, I went on to become the executive producer of a company called Pro Angle Media, which is a packager, and I primarily work for ESPN. So as Dean Kaplan said, I am a professor of practice and I still work in the industry. I produce, without pandemic, about 85 to 90 college uh, sporting events in, um, and Little League every year. So most weekends I'm flying to the West Coast to produce games for ESPN. Um, I produce college football, basketball, softball, baseball, um, the College World Series, the Women's College World Series, volleyball. And then my favorite event is Little League. Everyone always asks, what's your favorite event? Easy, Little League. It's so much fun. Um, so that's what I do. And the opportunity to come back and give back to Newhouse and be a part of this community again was one I just couldn't pass up. Um, and so I really wanted to come here and see what we could do for the next generation and figure out how we could prepare you guys, changes that we can make. I was lucky enough when I came here to have the late um, Dean Lorraine Branham, who was absolutely um, the most amazing person I've ever worked for really had foresight into what we needed to do. Um, and so we really started building out the sports media and communication track. So let me give you some information on what exactly that means. Most students want to know, is it extra? Do I have to pay more? Are there extra classes? Is my workload going to be heavier? The answer is no. There are certain requirements to doing it. And in some places there are more, but if you love it, it's not really work. So First of all, you when you do arrive on campus, hopefully we are all in person one day again to see each other and, and chat. Um, the first way, place that you will start will be with SMC 601 as a sports media and com communication pro seminar. So while you're taking our boot camps, as we like to talk, call it, you're also taking a sports media boot camp. That's one night a week um, with me. We really introduce you to a lot of parts of the industry. You get to meet all of the professors that teach um, at SU. So you find out about all the classes you can take, internship opportunities. You meet with athletics, um, scout.com, SI. So there's quite a few different 
um, speakers throughout. We have an opportunity to attend uh, a Syracuse Mets game. We talk about reporting. We talk about um, interviewing skills. We talk about gender in the uh, industry. All of these topics are covered. Um, and it's a really fun class to get to know each other. So from there, you are required to take six credits within your electives. Now, each of your programs, no matter what they are, have room for electives. You'll just be choosing to use those elective credits for sports classes. Does that make sense? So it's not actually extra, it's just you're using those, those credits, those elective credits for sports classes. And we'll talk about those sports classes, okay? You're also required to do an internship. Um, this is a one credit 45 hour internship during either the fall or the spring. I tend to suggest that you do it during the spring because you're a little bit more prepared. You've gotten the flow, you've, you're, you've become orange. And so you've got ready to rock and roll kind of under your belt. Um, I know some of you did your undergrad, so you're already orange. Um, so that's great. You'll be, you'll be ready to rock and roll when we get here. Um, you are required to be a part of campus media, and we'll get to that. There's more than enough opportunities and places you can do that. Um, and then we also have the uh, requirement for the five sports media and communication um, sports media center events. So we try to do one speaker a week for the sports media center. So it's really easy and you would probably attend those anyways. We just wanna make sure that you're interacting. This is your chance to network with alums. Um, we have had a ton of speakers come over the summer, Kirk Curb Street, not only alums, but, but people in the industry. Um, and so that's been really fun. Mike Trigo is at least twice a year. So if you miss him the first time, I promise he'll be back. Um, and then we finally have your required capstone. And it's a three credit that is, is completed during either summer session one or summer session two, depending on your program. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, stop me if you want. So why would you wanna choose Newhouse? Well, for me, that's easy because I did choose Newhouse and I know how it changed my career and it changed my life. Um, so many of the people that I went to college with are still my closest friends. I get to work with them all the time. Um, when I have a chance to produce other SU alums, it's just so great to know who they are and have that connection. But alums love working with students. And that's the thing. I know as, as an alum that I love when students reach out to me, I will sit and chat with you. Uh, I know Perry and I had like a 40 minute conversation just because I get excited about talking about all of this stuff. Um, Maggie's been in class with me. So she's like, yeah, sometimes she just won't stop. But I do get really excited. I love this place and I love this stuff. And one of the things that you'll see with other alums is that we all have that in common. And so when our, our alums have a chance to come back, they want to talk to you guys. It's not just a matter of, you know, going back and, and seeing the dome or seeing a game. They always request and really want to be a part of what you're doing. What can they help you with? Is that checking out your reel? Is that, you know, suggesting, um, you know, a Zoom meeting so that we can get to know each other and find out where you can, you know, better your skills, whatever it may be. And alums are always on campus, not during a pandemic, but we will get through this one. So we have a ton of events where our um, alums come and speak, and it's on all kinds of topics. One of the things that really is important to me is bringing in a diverse group of speakers for you guys. And when I say diverse, I don't just mean men and women, people of different ethnicities and gender. It's just about also what do they do? What is their career? Do you want to work in PR? Do you want to work in content marketing? Do you want to be a documentarian, write a book? Do you want to be an investigative reporter and, and you know, uh, um, uncover all of the things wrong with, I won't say any conference league or any, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but anywhere else, right? Um, we'll bring those in for you. And that's the important part that I want you guys to all understand is that when you become students, Come and talk to me about those things. If if you have someone you want to meet or hear from, let me know. Those are the those are what you know the challenges I love to get. Who can we come have come in and speak to you to help you become inspired or to teach you, no matter who that is, young or old, right? And you'll notice alums love taking pictures with students because we did it when we were students. I have pictures of all kinds of alums when you know the first time that I met you know Bob Costas. I I don't even. Think I think I spoke. I think I was like, hmm, I missed her a little bit, you know, um, which is hard to believe when I won't shut up now, right? But we want to make sure that you have a chance to meet all of the alums that you can and have that hands on. Um, we often have um, our grad students also connect with our alums as they're um, 
I don't want to call them chaperones because they don't need a chaperone, but we will assign grad students to go and pick up, you know, Sean McDonough at the Sheridan, walk them around, show them different classrooms. If he's got a tight budget, maybe, you know, that's a great opportunity for, you know, Ian to get to know him while walking him from one place to another and have a chance to chat, right? Or whoever it may be. So we always want to make sure that if, if you have a special alum that you just absolutely cannot wait. I had one this year who Beth Mowens is her all time hero. And, um, you know, I, we were able to set that up at least in zoom, like, Hey, you're going to jump on early with Beth. So you can make that connection with her and you can chat and maybe set something up. So we always are looking for those opportunities for you guys to learn a little bit more. Um, I love this, this slide here. Um, the middle is um, Robert Ford. Robert Ford is my year, unfortunately. And I say, unfortunately, because I'm a Dodgers fan. He is the radio broadcaster for the Astros. We won't talk about whether or not his ring is from cheating team or not, but that's okay. We like to all uh, decide our own sides of things, but uh, I don't feel bad now, obviously. So I think we're even. Um, and then of course, in the other shot, it's Jason Benetti um, also loves to come back and give back with our, with our students. Um, and that's the big part of being a part of the SU um, family, right? And having those, those chances to speak with our alums that you can't compare with anyone else. The other part that I want to make sure is that you guys understand as far as the broadcast digital journals and magazine, TRF, and then also we are working on PR. So though any of you that are interested in PR, just hold tight. We're getting there. We've got plans for you. Um, and we want to make sure that if that's what you're interested in, we've also had a marketing student that was really into sports. We kind of took under our wing as far as the, the track goes as well. So we can help us um, wherever you may be. Also, I will tell you, I had 42 grad students this year and I still have extras that aren't sports students to just hear about me and have, to, you are welcome to any advice that I have to offer, we'll squeeze you in. So just wanna let you know if you have friends or anything that you, you know I could maybe help. So let's revisit your sports electives. I know this list is a little bit long. I hate to bring it to you. It's not the only ones. We're missing some here too, okay? Sometimes it's great to go to a buffet and sometimes it's great to go to In-N-Out where you have only two choices. I don't know what to tell you. All of you during the end of your um, summer session one are gonna be like, oh no, what do I take? I wanna take them all. Please understand some of the, these classes are only offered in the fall. Some are only offered in the spring. Some are offered both. But here's just a quick look at some of the classes that you have the opportunity to take. Sports radio broadcasting, um, column writing, commentary, production, big surprise. Anyone want to guess who teaches production? Big, okay. Um, sports analysis, data, interviewing, play-by-play, -play, sports reporting. Um, so this is just a start. We added sports um, documentary two years ago. It's been a huge success. It's a TRF class. Um, and if you are a BDJ student, and you really find out that between your, you know, during your fall that you're really interested in the long form. Don't think just because it's a TRF class, you can't take it. Some classes have prerequisites. We need to make sure that you have the skills that, that you need to succeed, but you can cross over to different. I teach um, production, which is TRF. And I would say a good third of those students are BDJ students. And I have some MNO students. So know that as far as sports classes go, as long as you meet the requirements, to make sure you can succeed. You can cross over and take them. The, 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 the sky is yours, okay? Um, on whatever you wanna take. The one thing I want you to understand that, that really sets Newhouse apart as if we needed more. Every single professor that teaches a sports class works in the industry. We are not teaching you what happened 20 years ago. We're not teaching you the theory of, we're not teaching you what somebody once read in a book. We are teaching you what we do for a living every single weekend, sometimes during the week, depends if it's college basketball, let's be honest, right? So for an example, I will produce a game on a Saturday, a football game on a Saturday, and I teach class on Monday. And on Monday, my favorite thing is when a student raises his hand and goes, Wait, so uh, I was watching your class or I was watching your, your game and you took this weird shot or I had one that I missed, a, I missed a break and one of my students called me out and said, did you miss a break during the third quarter because you only had two breaks and I wondered and I was like, don't remind me, I, uh, it was horrible. But that's the fun part, right? Because I'm teaching you exactly what's happening in trucks right now. The other side that makes that really important 
is that because we all still work in the industry, we are privy to job opportunities, to those connections, right? That we can help you to succeed on that next level. When you leave here, you are ready to go into the workforce. And we have those connections to reach out to people. When you apply for jobs, you may say, hey, I applied for this reporting job in, in uh, you know, South Dakota. Do you happen to know anyone? Between all of us as your professors, you better believe we probably know someone or know someone that does because we're working with them on a regular basis. And so that's really helpful for you to make sure that you're getting exactly what's happening right now. So you have the skills to go straight into a station, a network, a control room, right? Right with, right with what you've got coming from Newhouse. All right. So let's talk about your um, campus opportunities. Many of you know that all ACC schools have an ACC network connection. Obviously, they did it at SEC. Newhouse is different. We are the only university that has live studio shows for the, for the ACC network. We are technically the only university that has live studio shows for any ESPN network. That is, let me, let me make sure that you understand this. This means that we have live pregame, halftime, and postgame shows about 40 a year that are completely produced, directed, hosted, all of it by students. I oversee it, of course, but students run the entire thing. They air on ACC platform or the um, ESPN platform. So those of you that are interested in producing can leave after one year having produced live studio shows for ESPN. Let that sink in a little bit, okay? You actually can put on your resume, I have done this. Those of you that wanna be on air have an opportunity to have hosted live studio shows on ESPN before you even leave our campus. And that's important to understand. Now, why are we the only university that is allowed to do that? A few reasons. One, I've worked at ESPN for 15 years and I am more than willing to put my reputation on the line because I know how good you guys are. Our studios are absolutely beautiful. Our staff is amazing and want you guys to succeed. And by the time you are ready, you are ready. And so this is a great opportunity that our students can not only execute correctly and, and successfully, but it's one that we just can't pass up with our beautiful facilities and everyone that wants the best for you guys. And when I say the studio shows, please understand, I am right now at 100%, which I'm super excited, of all of our students that have been a part of the production side and on air for the live studio side. When I say 100%, that means every single one of the students, grad and undergrad, that participated in live studio shows while on campus have full-time jobs working in sports. That's a big deal. That's a big deal because that's something that no other university and no other college student, master's student is leaving with when they, when they leave the university, right? So we want to make sure that we do the best for you guys. And so we have all kinds of opportunities. Now, ACC Network has just one. We have Citrus TV. We have, um, you know, the DO. We have quite a few different, um, the OTN, which is the Orange Television Network. Um, many of our students work for athletics within the athletic department. Some of them intern within the athletic department, whether that's creating content, working with the communications department, um, working with creative, actually like cutting highlights and those really cool videos that you see before and after games. Um, so we have all kinds of opportunities. The other part of um, Newhouse and the Newhouse Sports Media Center and the Sports Media Communication Track is that we have the opportunity for students to cover really big events as media, not student media, actual media. So we have two credentials for every SU game, football, basketball, lacrosse, wherever it happens to be, home and away that are guaranteed to us for our students to travel, make sure that they're, they're getting that experience. But we also added two years ago that we are sending students, we spend, send four students to the Super Bowl every year for an entire week. We send two, sent two grad students to NHL All-Star Weekend. Um, one of our alums happens to be the Director of Communications for an NHL Big Surprise Newhouse uh, Network got us again, right? So if we can think of it, we can do it. And we're always looking for those opportunities for you to get that real life experience. We don't want you cooped up in a lab all week, all day sitting with, we want you out there networking, meeting people, getting those real life skills. And some of the uh, opportunities and internships and capstones that our grad students have done over the last few years, just while I've been here, 
his full-time jobs at MLB Network, right? Um, this says Syracuse Chiefs, we had to add it because it was factual. It's also Syracuse Mets now. Um, many of our students have gone on to work at ESPN, CBS Networks. Um, they're, they've worked with the um, NFL Network. We just had a couple this year do that, NFL Films, um, the ACC Network. These are all opportunities that we can connect you with along the way to make sure that you are getting those connections. And the events that we host to get you those connections, Glickman Awards, um, we work closely with the Concussion Legacy Foundation. I was a part of a small group of people that created a workshop to teach you how to report on um, brain injuries live. I was a part of Bob Costas, J.A. Donde, um, Andrea Kramer, and I worked on that together. Um, we're de dedicated recruitment with, with networks. We want to make sure that, that you guys have connections. We have um, Little League World Series comes for a full day of interviews for their internship program. Um, that's only with SU and Penn State. No other universities are open for those Little League World Series. You, are, you, you live um, at, in Williamsport, they provide housing, they pay you, they feed you, and you get to have the entire experience working with MLB Network and ESPN, along with Little League World Series. MLB Network comes for a full day of interviews every year um, and hires anywhere from 12 to 20 of our graduate students um, each year for their program. And so we really wanna make sure that you guys have the opportunities to really get those connections while you're here. Um, and, and I want to make sure you guys all stop sharing because this is a little bit hard to read. want to make sure you all have my information. I can put that in chat for you. Um, it's only one winter. You're right. It is only one winter. You can do any one season only once. Is that what you're saying, Dean Kaplan? That was when you were talking about the snow and I'm saying graduate students only have to deal with one, one winter season. Well, unless you stay here, it's a beautiful place to live. You <laughs> never know. So I put my my email address in the chat, and I wanted to open it up to ask for you guys to ask questions. Um, with these kind of situations, oftentimes no one asks questions, and then as soon as it's over, I'm going to get like six emails that say, "Hey, I was wondering if we could maybe." So the thing is, is your question is probably someone else's question. So if you have them, don't hesitate to ask. All right, Lauren. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Olivia. I had a question regarding online school, though I probably share the sentiment with everyone and hope that school is in person. Um, next year, how have things adjusted for this past year if, hopefully not, if school is online next year? Well, I will let Dean Kaplan answer his part of like the actual technical stuff as far as those go. But I know for just from the sports classes, all of our professors have gone to teaching hybrid classes. So some students are in person, some are online. We're always looking for opportunities to figure out what if our students aren't in, in house. So for example, I taught sports production and I had five students that were online the entire semester. Um, and so it's a matter of figuring out how we can, how we can help those students get those same experiences. Um, one of the things that we did was we utilized file sharing. Um, when we did live sporting events, um, which their final projects were today, um, they actually did live sporting events with like rock, paper, scissors, um, um, paper football, uh, tic-tac-toe, um, cornhole. It was absolutely hilarious, you guys. If you want to see, I will, I'll be happy to share, share some links with you. Um, but it's a way for us to make sure our students are keeping connected. For our reporting classes, we are utilizing, um, you know, game archives. I have um, really worked on getting a lot of games without the, the announcers. So we've got World Series games. We've got college football games. Um, I actually have the match of Serena and Venus um, Williams playing against each other for those of you that are tennis fans right um, all without announcers and so you can have an opportunity to work on your play by play and, and, and working on that so we have adjusted really well. Steve Infanti, who teaches our reporting class, has done an absolutely wonderful job of figuring out how to teach our students to set up their, um, you know, cameras and, and lights and everything at home and, and utilize different footages, footage and sound um, bites and things like that. So as far as the sports classes go, all of our professors are prepared to teach um, both online and in person and, it, and most of them simultaneously. 
And I mean, I would just add, knock on wood, we won't have this problem next year. As of now, I'm going to take three separate shots from three separate drug companies. So I figured I'll be immune from one of those. Um, but, uh, you know, as you know, or you should know, all these programs are one year round, what we call wraparound. So they start in July and they end in June, except for broadcast, which, you know, the non-sports people go to Washington, although some sports people go to Washington and then, or they do an internship or do Little League World Series or something like that. Um, so we were virtual over the summer and I think it was a struggle for people in the production courses, um, but they, they were able to do it. And so if for some reason we had to do it again, at least you won't be the guinea pigs anymore. They know what, they know, they know what works, what didn't work. Um, I'm pretty proud that we were one of the few schools that really were able to go in person and um, even in, within Syracuse University, Newhouse had probably the highest percentage of in-person classes. We, we almost made it. We, we fell one week short. So I think it was uh, last week or the week before last where we stopped. We were going to stop um, tomorrow was the, the day we were supposed to stop. So, um, uh, but the, the nice thing about that is um, so the grad students who were virtual were able to come, but as Olivia said, some chose not to come at all because it was so uncertain. So we do a lot, of, we did a lot with hybrid um, where um, the big classes where half would be in one day and then half would be in the other day. But most grad classes aren't two days a week. Most of them are once a week. So we try to do it in person for all those. And knock on wood, it will also be the same next semester. We pushed it back until the end of January. Um, our hope, is, you know, if we have to go virtual again, then it's not just higher education and graduate school that's going to be a problem. I think we're going to have a problem all over the place. But I think it's really good that what we're seeing out there, and it's not really good right now because people aren't wearing masks and social distancing, but it's really good in terms of being able to have this vaccine. So, um, uh, and I think there, you know, I think there's a lot of pent up demand to come to get back to to education and to, to learn some of these things. Um, but the other thing that I think is really effective was that if you're watching TV, if you're watching Monday Night Football, professionals had to adapt as well. I mean, there I, I was watching, um, I don't know if you saw it because it was late at night, but it was I was watching the USC game fight on because my son went to USC and they lost their cameras in the middle of the game. And the and the play-by-play -play guys were having trouble because they weren't at the game. <laughs> so it's like they had to play by play without cameras. And I don't know really how they did it. They probably they had a stand telling the them what was feed. happening. But they called it off of the stat feed. Is that it? Yeah. 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 So um Kind of made me mad though because they said, "Oh, it's the end of the third quarter." Then they got the cameras back, and it was still the third quarter. But that's another thing. <laughs> but so you know, everyone has to adapt. So 